Well, hey guys, welcome to another puppy live stream, Great Pyrenees puppy live stream here at Willow Ridge Acres. We're so glad that you guys are joining us. Uh, while you're joining in, uh, let us know in the live chat where you're joining from so we can give you a shout out. Uh, we love doing that to just give a shout out to all, all of our viewers. And um, yeah, we've got the puppy cams going again outside. So we are down to how many puppies on the property now? 14. We have 14 left. Uh, so, uh, a bunch of them are, are, you know, have already gone home as like companion dogs. If you follow us on Instagram, you'll see like in our Instagram stories as they're going home to various places. We just sent one of them home. His name is Jimmy. Mm -hmm. Uh, he was, uh, the, the light blue collar from May's litter. Uh, he went home today with the awesome family from, uh, Tennessee. So he's going to Nashville. That's kind of cool. Um, <laughs> uh, we got... Anna joining on right now from Houston. She said hello from Houston. She's got a deposit on uh, Maverick. And Maverick's actually out uh, front with our son right now. Uh, we'll probably bring him in in just a little bit. Yeah. So I'm sure Anna wants to see him. But let's see if I, I can bring some audio on. So you can hear like the sounds of the farm out there. There's definitely a lot more action going on on Puppy Cam too. <laughs> So the puppies are are out there doing their livestock guardian training still. That's Mabel. Yeah, that's Mabel right there, our mama Mabel, and uh, the puppies are getting their exposure to our, you know, our chickens and whoa, mm -hmm. and, <laughs> and our uh, our goats and and our pig. So we're continuing that that um, you know that livestock guardian training with them. So we've got our some of our kids out there you know helping them out with that right now where you know me and, and mama stay inside in the, in the ac during the live stream so we don't sweat so much but uh ashley is uh joining saying hi from how do you is that is that wiley texas i i think that's how you pronounce it right i have no idea i don't know Just I mean, name one other way that you well there's a lot of a lot of names in texas that aren't pronounced the way you think they are true <laughs> but ashley has a deposit on one of the puppies uh here on the video right now so on it's one the, of them out there. oh ashley said that's right but that's the right pr pronunciation so oh that one in the hay is like filthy <laughs> yes <laughs> on on puppy cam too yeah yeah oh wow <laughs> wow yeah so the puppies still like to to get you know in the water and get all muddy um they just like having having fun out there so um they clean up pretty easy though melissa so. who is that mr black from mabel's so that's bingo that's bingo one of the ones that is under deposit so we're we're down to just um just two male puppies that are available we've got mr blue and mr gray from millie's litters and maybe at some point Melissa can find them <laughs> and uh, show them for the camera. But um, yeah, we're down to just two now. They're available, and they're out there, you know, getting some some training as well. We've got uh, Wendy joining. She said hi from Hansville, Washington. That's awesome. Thanks for joining, Wendy. Thanks for watching. Nicole's watching from Shirts. What's up? What's up, Nicole? How are uh, how are the two pups doing? Are they? Uh, they, you know, get used to being at home with you there. Uh, I'd love to get some, you know, some pictures and some updates for me on that. Boys. Yeah. yeah, you can see, uh, you know, on the different cameras, we've got, you know, some of the, the hens are out there with them. We've got a couple of the goats uh, in that area with them. So just giving them, you know, more exposure and, um, you know, getting them used to being around livestock. So and they're all doing really, really well. Yeah, I mean, they're still... You know, all right. Well, which one is this? Mr. Blue from Millie. That's Mr. Blue from Millie Glitter. <laughs> I actually, I mean, we've all said this. I really think that Mr. Blue. I mean, he he's gonna be a great dog all around, but uh, he's he has the makings of a great livestock guardian as well. Um, he's one of the first ones to like alert and bark. Mm -hmm. So um, he he would be really really well suited for a farm, and. Uh, being a livestock guardian. Yeah. 
We've got Tamara is joining from Vancouver, Washington. That's awesome. That's pretty, pretty far north, I assume. Well, yeah, I, I assume that's pretty close to Vancouver, Canada. Probably just on the other side of the border. I'm not going to hack off Canada. I don't know. <laughs> Let's see. Nicole said they're doing so well. It's crazy how different their personalities are. Oh, yeah. We noticed that, you know, before we sent them home with you, Nicole. Definitely. They have very, I mean, you guys kind of picked them out that way, though. You know, like your husband wanted the like more chill one and you wanted the, the feisty one. And I think you guys got them. So, yeah. Nicole said Pearl can easily ring the bell to be let out to go potty. Daisy will literally lay down and pee on herself. Oh, no. <laughs> So, so Nicole, it sounds like you're doing like what we do here. Yeah. We we like hang some bells on our on our doorknob, you know, for the front door for our inside dogs, and we've trained them to go up and like ring the bells when they're ready to go out. So that's awesome to hear that, that Pearl is learning to do that pretty easily. Yep. What were you gonna say? Oh, I was just gonna say, our youngest is almost a year. Our youngest puppy is like inside dog is almost a year. Yes. And they don't go to the bathroom in the house. So. Right. It may seem like forever now when you're body training. Yep. Yep. The mamas out there are alerting to something. We've got somebody else joining on. Consuelo says hi from Kendalia, Texas. Hey, thanks for thanks for tuning in. And by the way, if you guys have any questions, let me put the uh, the little ticker thing up to let everybody know. Um, but if you have any questions, drop them in the live chat, and uh, we'd be we'd be happy to answer any questions live right here on the live stream any questions about uh you know the puppies or great pyrenees in general or even like kind of small farm life we're not we are by no means experts at this, but um we learn a lot every single day and uh, we've been doing this for i don't know three and a half years now so we definitely learned quite a bit in those three and a half years and we would love to share that knowledge with anybody else that's looking to start or um you know looking to getting into, you know, kind of homesteading, like what we're doing, so. Yeah, we've been doing it a few years. And yeah. We have a new challenge that we're, we're trying to overcome our fencing again. Our fencing is just kind of constantly an issue. The goats have stretched it out. And yes. We've had like a severe drought. Um, so our yard is basically dust that's blowing away with every breeze that comes by yeah so. we're dealing with quite a bit of uh, quite a bit of erosion right now um as you can see like we just have a lot of rocks and dirt we don't have a lot of grass or weeds right now just because it's been so hot and so dry uh we're just not getting any growth um and then like as michelle said uh the goats I, you know, we're, we're still pretty new to having goats. We've had goats for like three years now. And people talked about how much they love, love to rub up against the fence. And I heard about that, but like, I didn't think it was that bad. Uh, but they constantly rub up against the fence and they can stretch out some welded wire fencing like real quick. It's crazy. I, I put that stuff up and made sure it was like super tight. And, you know, just years later, you know, a few years later, I mean, it's only been like three years. And a lot of it just is like, like bulged out from them just like constantly like rubbing up against it to like scratch their backs um it's a real problem it is. <laughs> i'm not sure what we're going to do about it yet and i don't i don't really want to go out there and replace all no. that fencing so. our goal is like keep the puppy safe and so we yes. do yard checks and it just kind of was like why why do we keep having to like pile these rocks higher and higher and then we really looked around and saw what's happening so that's gonna yeah. yeah we'll probably address that this fall once it's not 100, 100 degrees outside degrees. yes great. i saw it's gonna be 94 i mean that's kind of nice it is it's like a cold front coming through we're gonna have to <laughs> bust the jackets out <laughs> let's see tamara said just got two puppies from my cousin lost my other one a month ago uh to guard my chickens mm. gotcha gotcha yeah they're they're amazing um they're amazing for guarding chickens. They're, I mean, they take a little bit of training to be, you know, trusted around poultry. But um, let's see, Michelle was just pointing out another comment for me. My one puppy keeps chasing the chickens. How do I make them stop? Yeah. Uh, so that's kind of, you know, what we're hoping to show you a little bit on this um, on this live stream is 
you know, we just believe in giving them early and often exposure to the chickens, uh, you know, to, to set them up for success. Uh, Tamara, I'm not sure how old your puppy is, uh, but the ones you're seeing here, they're now uh, like nine months, almost 10 months, uh, 10 months, 10 <laughs> weeks old. They're almost 10 weeks old. Yeah. They'll be in most of them like Thursday and Friday. Yes. Um, but, you know, we just like we, we give them a lot of exposure early, but then also, you know, once they're in with the hens, um, we give them a lot of like supervised time with them. So, you know, either ourselves or our kids are out there. And if they see any type of behavior that is not ideal, meaning even even giving the hens more than just a glance, mm -hmm. like if they like start staring at them and watching them walk across. and watching them walk across, we correct that right away. So because um, our goal is and you'll see it in our adult dogs is um, so you can see it there on. I'm not sure what, what camera is that camera to um, Tamara. That's exactly what uh, my daughter's doing right now is giving them just some correction in the moment uh, because, you know, that hen was walking past and they started like, you know, giving a lot of attention to it. And, uh, you know, we're about to start stalking or, or trying to chase them. So she said that they're, they're three months old. So, yeah. So, you know, the, the end goal though is, you know, uh, you might be able to see it on this live stream that, you know, our adult Great Pyrenees that you see out there, they basically ignore the hens. They act like they're not even out there. Um, and that's what the goal is for the puppies as well. So, so a little specifically kind of lay out what we do. First off would be at three months, they shouldn't be alone with the chickens, guarding them without supervision. Um, I would probably lean more toward six months, you know, just a very gradual like exposure and watching them. Um, and then we, correct like stalking with eyes behavior with like a sound and maybe like a little you know throat jab yeah <laughs> just like to get their focus off of them if we see any chasing behavior at all we put them on their back so it's kind of like you know it's not like an extreme but like the idea for us is like stop the behavior before it's even a behavior if that makes sense right so totally. like a, a lot of times just going in like getting them like on the back of the neck or something is enough to like make them turn and stop looking. And if they turned around and immediately did it, I would literally do the exact same thing again. Um, yes. Yeah. You know, the thing is like, you want to correct it before they get to the point where they're chasing mm -hmm. it. So that way they don't even get to that point. I mean, you're not always going to see it. Not every place, single time, but, but when you, you know, do, when you do, that's what you want. Consistency do. is definitely key. Yep. With them. Hey, Melissa, if you're, if you can hear me, um, if you can unmute the mics, that way we can get some like farm sounds. There we go. I know that the dogs were barking, but all right, we got a few other comments here. Let's see. Um, Carla commented and said, just dropped in to see the adorable babies. I can fall asleep thinking about them. Thank you. You're absolutely, you're welcome. <laughs> we, we enjoy, you know, sharing this with, with, our YouTube audience and um, you know, it's, it's, you know, it's a lot of work. I'll be honest. It's a lot. Of, I was about to say it's like therapy to us and it is, we, we, we enjoy, you know, having uh, you know, the dogs around for sure. We love dogs. That's why we have so many of them. Um, and you know, it's, it, there's something like therapeutic to it. So we like to share that as well. Let's see. We've got a comment from Tina He said, hi from Arkansas. They're so adorable, very playful, but how can you keep puppies so clean? I had trouble. Ours are not clean. Look at the one on, on camera too right now, Tina. They're not, that one is filthy dirty. <laughs> but she said, bathing my great Pyrenees, they're uh, my brother's dogs and he has three of them. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I mean, the, the puppies are, are a little difficult to keep clean. Uh, just because they, they just love to roll around in the mud and uh, get into the water. Uh, I'm mean, also even our the adult ones, even the, our mama dogs out there will do it for sure, the dad. Um, but, you know, to, to keep them clean, um, definitely, I mean, a huge pro tip is if you have a great Pyrenees, you absolutely need a coat blower. Uh, 
<laughs> Sorry, put you on the spot. Yeah, an all dog, dogs are working. Yes. Um, we just got one. I've been eyeing one up for a long time. Did some research, had it on our list. During Amazon Prime Day, like halfway through the day, I was like, oh, I want to go see if it, anything on our list is on there. That happened to me, so we bought it. For the puppies, we can dry. So it's a coat blower. So we, when you use that in combination with a de-shedding shampoo, basically what's going to happen is it's going to like just force that undercoat like out if that makes sense. But it's also just like a giant blow dryer. And it and it speeds up the process like 10 right. times. The puppies, you know, we always bathe them before they go home. Um, and it we can blow dry them in five minutes. Whereas how long did it take with the actual blow dryer? 45 minutes to an hour. And, and they still weren't even, even dry. Great. Yeah, they still, still weren't even totally dry. So, I mean, that's a, a, a big time consuming part of bathing and cleaning a Great Pyrenees is trying to get them dry mm -hmm. again. Uh, so if you have a great Pyrenees, I'm telling you, like we waited for a prime day deal, but her, her exact words were, it would have been worth my time to pay the extra 60 or $70 when I've spent how many hours of yeah. blow drying the dogs. Yeah. It's, it's legit. And like, ruining my own blow dryer. So yes. Yes, exactly. That. Yeah. This weekend we made Monty, who's our rescue that's kind of on this side of the property. And he's huge. Um, yeah, he's got a really thick coat too. Yeah. He <laughs> looked like a show dog when we were done. And it we timed it just so that we could know how long it took. Because we're going to do a video, but he really needed it. It's so hot. We really needed to clear literally as much as yes. we could off of him. Clear a lot of that shedding, that, that um, undercoat. And it took 35 minutes to... <laughs> blow his coat right and he was dry and fluffy and he looked amazing yeah yeah he's dirty again that's good that's cool. <laughs> not super dirty but i mean he he lives outside so that's what happens yeah yep all right we got a couple more comments here uh lenny said puppies getting bigger love it two years are for when you can fully uh trust them yeah. uh I mean, ours, I feel like it, after they reach the one year mark. Yeah. I feel like around one year, they're, they're pretty much good to go. I feel like, I if mean, two years for year, sure. Right. Yes. Yeah. yeah. If you, if you train them really well from the beginning, I feel like one year, they're pretty good. Um, I mean, maybe some of that though, for us is that we have, you know, like, so you know, with May being one year old, when she was one, she was fine with them, but she was also around are slightly older great pyrenees that have been great around chickens as well so and they, they do an amazing job of kind of teaching each other so um, that might be part of it of why you know we're comfortable with ours out there with them that one year so but yeah i mean that's a, a huge part of it is uh you, know, you have to remember it when you bring home a puppy it's still a puppy mm -hmm. you can't just like throw it out there and ex expect it to like do its job to its you know highest <laughs> Yeah, it's still just a baby just a baby <laughs> let's see oh hey we got a, a super sticker from maddie p in three what's yeah. up matt thanks so much man we appreciate the love and support appreciate that man just love that of. yes that's my cousin i love <laughs> hey appreciate it that's awesome all right let's see we got some some great uh oh matt matt said that it's a uh, dog food donation <laughs> thanks matt. yeah man it's crazy right now i'm like we're going through it man with all these puppies and and our dogs like normally we buy and this is even a lot like we buy uh six 40 pound bags of dog food every three weeks i think it's down to like that much i think we basically doubled it um yeah we're i'm now having to buy six 40 pound bags of dog food every week and a half. It's a lot. It's a lot. Like even the guy at Tractor Supply doesn't believe why <laughs> it comes so often. Like nobody else buys that much dang dog food. Sometimes they just cancel the order. They're not even, they're like, we just don't even have it. Like just stop. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. Josh said prevention is always going to be easier than correction for sure. Way easier to prevent a behavior before it starts right. than it is to train a bad one out. It's true. Very Inside true. Inside or out. That's yep. applicable. Is that how you say that word? Applicable. I believe so. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yep. Let's see. We 
got a, a few a few more yeah. awesome comments coming in uh yeah wendy said sounds like an awesome tool yeah seriously um we're gonna do a video like a, a review video on the coat blower and I'll, I'll i'll tell you too um when you look on amazon there's a, a few different ones and there's one that's only like 60 bucks we can't speak to that one we got the like yeah. more expensive one mm -hmm. so i don't know if the 60 dollars one is as good um but we got one yeah. Yeah. It's normally like 200, 200 bucks but we got it i think it's even okay. on sale right now mm -hmm. yeah um but it's it's amazing it is. it's like five horsepower it's really fun like <laughs> it like makes your whole skin move and then if you like hold it up to your face you're <laughs> it's like all blowing out yeah when when we were using it too we bought a de shedding shampoo and we'll link that too because it works amazing um the hair was just like everywhere and it was me and melissa and lane and when it would get on us like i would just turn it around and like even use it to blow off our own faces because there was just literally <laughs> hair everywhere yeah so. oh yeah it's it's crazy crazy uh the amount of, of fur that comes off of them and uh Anna has a great question about their fur. She said, uh, when does their, their grown undercoat come in? Uh, when, when can we start using an undercoat rake? I'm not sure if it's the same as Huskies, but I remember right. we had to wait for a while because of their puppy fur. Yeah. So not yet for sure. Um, yeah. They're not going to have that like some undercoat of them are to shed starting out just to yet. get their undercoat in. And I think it's going to depend on like where they ended up. The ones here in Texas, they you may have to do a brushing like in the late fall. I'm not sure like how that's going to work out. Um, but the ones that are up north, it should grow in just in time for it to be cold. Yeah, yeah. Hey, we got uh, another. Uh, we got a super chat from uh, Marsha. Thank you so much, Marsha. Thank you for the support. Uh, we really appreciate it. That, that goes towards our much needed uh, dog food fund, Ooh, probably. Look, look what Anna said about the coat blower. Our apartment complex has one that everyone can use for free and it's life changing. That it is really amazing. is. It really so we, is. He was even like, oh my gosh, like we're going to do some conversions to our garage. And yes. he was like, maybe we could do like a dog wash washing station there. And I'm like, then there would be hair everywhere. But if <laughs> I lived in an apartment somewhere and it wasn't my house at the. Yeah. And uh, how does that. How is it, honestly, we've never taken like our dogs to like a self wash, mm -hmm. you know, pet, like a dog wash place. How does that work? Like if they, if they have the coat blower there at your apartment complex, does like hair just like go all over the place in the, in the air, like in that room? Um, <laughs> or is there like another thing? Like, do they have like, like a vent hood that like sucks it all up? I don't mm -hmm. even know. That'd be pretty cool. Good question. Yeah. <laughs> um, let's see. Marcia said, if you have a puppy that misbehaves, will the older correct the behavior? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Our our mama dogs definitely will. Um, I don't I don't know that I've ever seen Mac no. correct. I don't think Mac will do it. <laughs> Mac Mac. I mean, he just he doesn't really care about the puppies. You know, no. he's he's great. Like he's great at being a livestock guardian, mm -hmm. but he just um, he's a terrible father. He's a terrible father. <laughs> I'm telling you, I joke about it, but I'm going to, I'm going to hit him up for some child support because he's got all these yeah, babies. When you were talking a minute ago about when we'd be okay to let them out on their own, I was thinking to myself, when we got May, she was out there alone with our older dogs. We didn't even use our own at like program. With yeah. Her. We just put her out there. So I guess I didn't realize like how much the older dogs really do yeah. train the young, younger dogs where we, I mean, there were a few behaviors we had to correct and we we're constantly outside and watching. It's not like she, we just put her out in the field and left her yeah. there, but I mean, definitely the older dogs like raised her. Yeah, they did. Yeah. Honestly. I mean, we didn't, we didn't do our full like livestock guardian training program with, with May when we got her and uh, we actually got her pretty young. Not every, not every breeder does like what we're doing. And, um, you know, if they're going to farms, keeps them till 12 weeks. Mm -hmm. I think we actually got May like from the breeder. She wasn't even quite eight weeks. They're like, you can just come pick her up. Yeah. I think she was like seven weeks old. Um, we're like, okay, well we'll raise her. We did put her in the 10 by 10, like at night and yes. we kept her safe, but we weren't like 
gradually introducing her to anything. We're no. just like, oh, hey, look, this is what we do here. Look at Mac getting in the water trough on the other side of the fence. After dinner, it looked like he was taking a bath. Oh, there he goes. Some of the puppies are watching him. He's like, hey, oh, mind your business. His tail on. Yeah. He does not care. <laughs> he's like, Daddy, look at me. He makes that trough look really small. Yeah, he does. He's a big boy. All right, let's see. Do we have any other comments? Anna was talking about the coat blower thing. It's amazing. Made it so much easier to bathe. Seriously. And I know Anna has at least one husky. I think she might have two. Um, and yeah, huskies, from what I understand, their coats are pretty similar to mm -hmm. Great Pyrenees, where they have that double coat, they have that you know thick undercoat that sheds out a lot. Um, so let's see. Wendy say we have brought our girl to a self wash, and there was fur everywhere. <laughs> the first time we saw one of those, we went to St. Louis, and it was a car wash. Yes, yeah, there they was like a, had a dog. Wash, that was and genius. We thought it was funny, and now it's like a thing. Yeah, like <laughs> up in St. Louis, where like I'm originally from, and I have a lot of family up there. We went and visited one time, and there was like a self service car wash, you know, with like you know the the high pressure, you know, whatever, and all, you know all those car wash bays. But right in the middle of it, there was like a self service dog wash room at the car wash. I was like, that's actually genius. Yeah. yeah. That's awesome. Anna said that I have a Husky and a Husky mix. Mm. Yes, that's right. That's what I remember. I remember you telling me that. Lenny asked, uh, did the inside dogs aren't livestock guardian dogs, puppies go home to their families already? All uh, but one. Yes, mm -hmm. all but one, all but, uh, but Anna's. So we've got, um, his name is Maverick, yeah. and I named him Maverick. Maverick is here. He's out front. Um, we can, Cameron. yeah, we can probably have Cameron bring him in in a second yeah. and show him. Um, I saw a question. I don't know if it was down there, but let me. While you're looking for that, I'll go see if he can bring Maverick in. Okay. There was something about the dog balls. Oh, here we go. You guys don't have a typical, do I just click it and it shows it? Yes. Typical dog water bowl. I think you said, what? what's it called that you use for the dogs? We use water troughs. Yeah, it's yeah. It's silver or they, the black one is plastic. Um, yes, yeah, so we use uh, water troughs um, for, for the dogs. Here's, oh, gosh. <laughs> oh goodness. Here's Maverick. This is Anna's puppy. Just outside. He's gonna be ready to go home this Friday. This Friday morning, he'll be going <laughs> home. <laughs> hey, buddy. But yeah, Lenny. Um, so as you can see, like uh, you know, on both of the cameras, you see there's the silver water trough and then the black water trough. Uh, though, you can just get those from like Tractor Supply, um, and you know they're for livestock, but uh, the dogs drink out of them too. Mm -hmm. And uh, that silver one is like a shorter one uh usually that size comes like uh twice that tall for i guess like cattle and horses uh but we got the shorter one because we have we have mini goats uh like the, the like dwarf goats they're not that tall and then the you know the dogs uh it's easier for them to and especially the puppies mm -hmm. it's easier for them to drink out of the shorter style one um but the the reason why we do the the troughs as well is um the dogs love to get in the water and so even if you you put a water bowl out there, they're going to try to like get in it by like putting their paws in it. We did buy a smaller bowls that we thought were large that we could just like keep filling up. But then we go outside and the whole entire thing's flipped upside down and it's empty. Because they 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 try to get in it and they spill it all out and then it it, it they end up flipping it over and then it's empty and then that's a really bad thing in in Texas heat. Mm -hmm. Like you don't want your dogs running out of water so to us you know the a, a big water trough that they cannot dump over um is is the way to go so they'll get in it and they get the water a little dirty but it just becomes part of uh doing farm chores is every day you got to go over there and you know fill it up or dump it out and clean and it. clean it and and refill it so let's see where else we got we got some more comments i think oh uh, hey forrest is on he said What's up? I'm late, but I made it. Forrest uh, just, uh, he actually came and visited. He's got two of the puppies. 
uh, that you can see on here. Uh, and he's all the way from in, in Alabama. But Forrest actually hit us up just this uh, this past week mm -hmm. and said, hey, I'm actually going to be in Dallas uh, for something. And if I can break away, uh, I'd love to come down and just see the puppies. And we're like, sure, come on by. So you got to come and visit Willow Ridge Acres. Quick five-hour trip. Yeah, a really quick five-hour <laughs> drive to come down and, and see his pups. But I'm sure he was happy to see them. The oh, yeah, we definitely would have. <laughs> so Forrest actually, uh, he, he let us know uh, while he was here. I had no idea, but Forrest has a YouTube channel as well. And he's actually going to start, uh, a, you know, kind of a similar like, homesteading style channel. So um, if you guys are interested, hit him up, look at look up his channel. It's literally his name, Forrest Smith, um, and give him a, a subscribe. Yeah. Let's see. Ashley said, if he is the camera, we'd love to see her. They're so much bigger since when uh, since when we did selection oh yeah they've already gotten quite a bit bigger like jimmy that just went home to tennessee today he was 20 pounds he weighs 20 pounds already but he's the big, also the biggest guy that went home at eight weeks here we go 20 pounds. this is b yes yep there you go ashley that's b right there <laughs> what's her color collar melissa red oh yeah yep uh Millie's red or Millie's. Yep. Melissa knows all of them like by heart. I still like I keep like a master spreadsheet, and um, you know, I have to check the spreadsheet from time to time to remember like which one. Yeah, you know, they all have collars, but like I have to check and 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 see and reference like which one is which. Uh, but Melissa knows like all of them by heart. Like she can. Melissa, did you already like? You didn't even have to like search around for it. You just knew by like looking at her, right? Yeah. That's crazy. I that she can do that. <laughs> Ashley said she's so cute. Yeah, she's she's gonna be a great, a really great dog. All right, Anna said, yay, counting the seconds to bring him home for, for Maverick. It's gonna come quick. It's gonna come quick. Yeah. What, are you gonna be sad? Oh. Yes, you are. <laughs> <laughs> we try our best not to get attached, but uh, Maverick has has required a little bit extra attention, and you know because of that, you know it's gonna be it's gonna be difficult to to not uh, you know be attached and to to let go. But we got we got to let go. He's gonna be a great dog. <laughs> yep. Yep. All right, let's see. Jamie says, I love my livestock guardian dog. He's 11 weeks. I love him. It's such a cool age because, like Nicole said, their personalities, like, really come out. They really start to show. You just see them, like, becoming confident, like, in the world around them. Yes. And it's just cool. Yeah. <laughs> you, you can see one of our, our goats on that camera. He has the wildest <laughs> hair on top of his head. I've literally... I don't like pay attention to goats a ton other than ours. Like, but I've never seen a goat with hair. Like it doesn't look real. Like he, it looks like he has a wig. Yeah. Like he has a wig on. I don't know how else to explain it. <laughs> Anna said, ha ha. We'll, we'll be sending lots of pigs. He'll keep us up. He is. He's, he's going to be a great dog. Yeah, if you guys have any other questions, drop them in the, in the live chat. We're happy to, to get any questions you have. And uh, we'll keep the the live stream going here, give you guys some some live views of I feel the like farm this, here. I like Wanda Puppies has really loved toys a lot more than... Yeah, it's or, true. I don't know if it's because there were so many of them, and they're like, oh, I'm just going to fight over this. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what it is, but they're really enjoying the toys. It's not going to be long before the puppies are bigger than the goats those two goats we got those goats are pretty young though we just got those bucklings i don't know how long ago march for yeah yeah that's right in march we got them <laughs> in march that's right they're my birthday present <laughs> i don't know what the other boys are doing melissa's out there doing all the work owen and lane what are you doing The bucklings one of them actually bucked one of the puppies on saturday yeah it was, it was a, a little 
tiny buck. <laughs> yes, and it's fine. Like, <laughs> but it was a quick lesson, and it hasn't happened since. <laughs> yep, you, you mess with the goat, you get the horns, right? <laughs> Is that Lenny the said. Same? Yeah, I, I think thought so. it was the bull. Or... It's the same thing, though. <laughs> it's the same thing. <laughs> Lenny that said. Be like, they're doing animal? great with those bucklings. Yeah, they really yeah, are. They are. They are. We haven't let. We actually have a goat named Maverick, and he's the jerk goat uh he's he's a he's a jerk and uh he really loves to buck the the puppies so we learned that with our first litter that we ever had so we don't let the puppies in with maverick the the goat um until they're a little bit bigger to where you know the the puppies can do a better job of handling their own so i love when the puppies get out of the trough like and just little and tiny legs yeah, their their legs are like soaking wet, and it looks like they have like little bird legs. Yeah, they look like little sheep. Like yeah. they're gonna like fall over sideways. Yeah, is that all the mothers sleeping all at the same time? Yeah, <laughs> they're That's they're hilarious. taking a break from babysitting since the uh, since Melissa's out there. <laughs> oh, sorry to wake you up. <laughs> That's the mamas up there taking a nap. Let's see, Forrest asks, at what age will they start to bark aggressively? Mm. That's Some a of them, question. a few of them actually have started a little Jimmy bit. Jimmy, did, did, he's an inside dog, but he had the funniest bark. Like he was just Ruff! like, it was like all internal. Yeah. Yeah. That's actually, um, so Millie's blue male, um, he, and he's one of the ones yeah. that's available. He actually has like one of the like earliest mm -hmm. aggressive barks mm -hmm. out of all of them. Um, he, he started pretty early, um, but like at, at what age? uh i don't know i mean i feel like i feel you know a lot of them don't even really develop that while we have them you right. know they go like at 12 weeks a lot of them don't even develop that so the early ones will but i would say they probably start to really develop that i don't know i don't know would you say like four or five months mm -hmm. probably yeah like four or five months old and it's hard to predict what their bark is going to be honestly mabel has the scariest bark on yes. the face of the earth it's terrible yeah our mama mabel is has the most aggressive bark like more so than you know what monty monty just doesn't bark that often but monty's bark is pretty aggressive to you uh but mac i don't know if it's just he's like so big instead of like an aggressive bark he just kind of sounds like woo, 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 right. woo. like mm -hmm. it's like a <laughs> Howling bark. Yeah, it's like a howling bark. It's not like a aggressive bark. Um, but yeah, Mabel's is, Mabel's is the one. Like, you don't you don't mess with Mabel. That's why one of the reasons why we call her Queen Mabel. Nobody mm -hmm. messes with Mabel. Yep. They're fighting over something. I think it's one of the toys. I think that's the gray. That one. Oh yeah, they're playing with one of the toys. Yeah, these ones definitely have played with toys a lot more than our last litters, for sure. <laughs> the uh, if you're if you've been following for a while, the um, you'll see Melissa. Will you show Catherine? I think Forrest is watching still. I know that's Catherine right there. Um, their their badger markings have really started to fade. Yeah, hers especially. Yeah, so hers used to be a lot darker than that. That's exactly how May's were. And it's interesting because yep. our Google Photos thinks it asked me if her and May were the same animal. Yes, yes. Gonna look just like her mama. Oh, that yeah. Eyeliner. And yeah, she's got that super dark, like 80s rocker <laughs> eyeliner. <laughs> <laughs> yes. They all have Max giant ears. He has like the biggest ears ever. Yep. Yep. Oh, that's a good idea. Oh uh, yeah. Lenny said you should do a video of all your dogs, different barks, like a compilation or something. That'd be awesome. Yeah. Yeah. We should, we could do that. It would just take a little bit because they're not, it's not super easy to predict when they're going to bark unless there's, there's a guy that like comes by every morning around 7 30 AM and walks his dog. Um, down our street and without fail all the dogs bark <laughs> but he wears those little ear things yeah he wears and like airpods and he just ignores them mm -hmm. yep he's so athletic i'm jealous i know i run vicariously through him every day we got a treadmill in the garage that we use 
every so often. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Four Kathy, said, you're not being a lady again. Four said, beautiful. <laughs> she <laughs> did that the other day, too. Is that Catherine Lane like that? Yeah. Uh, frozen. No. Oh, is it, oh, it was frozen. I was like, wow, she's really, really still. <laughs> oh, she's still it froze longer. for a second. Her eyes. Look at her eyes. <laughs> What are you doing? What are you doing? <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. They have their, they've had their 30 minutes of playtime. Now they're going to all kind of start to. Yep, they're all going to start crashing out. out. Yep. It's kind of the flow. Let's see what this one does with the goat. And move right out the way. He's looking at him. <laughs> Goats are so funny. You know, the the curiosity and then just kind of ignoring, but like when need be, they do set boundaries, you know, with them. And we do allow that, even though we don't oh, the dogs. really yes. allow interaction between the animals and the dog. Well, they're all animals, but, you know, the farm animals and the dogs, except when it comes to feeding time. Yep. Oh, that one... Uh... The goat right there was just like, because the puppy was starting to get Morning. a little too curious. Yeah. Yep. The, I, I don't know if you guys saw it on one of my uh, recent videos. I think it was in the one, um, like, how hot, or, you know, how do the Great Pyrenees do in hot weather? It was th that video that we published. Uh, in that video, I got, like, an epic, I did, like, the slow-mo video on my uh, iPhone of the two young bucklings doing mm -hmm. like the whole like headbutt thing, but like in slow-mo, it was pretty epic looking. Was that yeah, the I, one that you made and then you took like three weeks to edit and then post? That is that one. Oh. Yep. Yeah. I, I never did watch it. You never watched it? Oh, you should watch it. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Matt said, Lenny, they should. And then uh, they can play a game on the next live to guess the bark. Yeah. Yeah. I'm telling you, if we if we did just audio files of their barks, like everybody would agree that Mabel's is like the most aggressive. It's she I mean, she don't we play could games. Do that. We could film it and then be like, "Who do you think it is?" And then yeah, like, we need to do that. Oh, it's Mabel. We need to do that. Yeah, <laughs> Mabel don't mess around though. I'm telling you, she's scary. She gets scary loud. And the mamas did move outside. You know, they had been inside. Maybe we can answer that question no one asked. Um, they kind of go into this, like, weird, like, <laughs> mini heat situation. Yes. After they give birth. Kind of like humans, you know, your body just does, like, some weird things. So that was kind of going on. So they relocated outside. Yeah, but we still have – so we have them in the section of our property that's, like, cross fence. Um, and we've got that closed. So we've got um, Mac, you know, our, our, our daddy dog, uh, <laughs> separated from the mamas. Uh, that way, you know, if they do go into like a mini heat, um, you know, that Mac won't be, you know, exposed to them. Because uh, that's just... Feast famine for him right now. <laughs> yeah, it just wouldn't, that wouldn't be good for no. our mamas to get pregnant right no, away we again. we don't want to do that. We don't want to do that at all. We're going to skip at least one heat for every, for every one of them. And we're actually going to get... Mabel Spade. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm a little sad about that because she's such a great mama, but this this pregnancy was a little rough yeah. on her, so we Even don't want to push she it. She was extremely sick. You know, we got home from the emergency vet. She jumped out of the car and ran right over and went in. You know, to check on her babies. Yep. Even though I mean, she was super sick. She didn't care. She just wanted to be right yep. back in there with her babies. So yeah, she's a she's, she's a, a great mama. Good mother. Yep. Look at him playing. I think that's Catherine looking at her upside down. She just needs some manners. <laughs> <laughs> this is Catherine. That one that is? Okay. Yeah. Who's chewing on Catherine? Max. <laughs> they are at like polar bear cub stage. Do you know what I'm talking about? Oh, yeah. Where like their bodies have started to like fully expand like they're getting like wider and they just like everything's like floppy and they're just like all yeah they're kind of in that like awkward like where sometimes they had a hard to, like they're like growing into their big body yeah. you know they're kind of like gumby sometimes yeah yeah 
Here's Madeline. Oh, Madeline's right there with, with Catherine. With Catherine. Look, that's a good sign for us. And it's frozen again. Uh, It'll come up. Did you see the electric company truck drive by like 10 minutes before we were going to? I did. <laughs> I started to get nervous. On I like, heard it today? too. It was really loud. That truck was really loud. <laughs> All right, let's see. Forrest said, thoughts for a video, things you recommend for new owners, types of brushes, nail clippers, things you think new owners should have, yeah. et cetera. Yeah, uh, Forrest, we actually just published a new blog post and we'll probably make a, uh, a video. Well, not probably, we will. We'll make a video out of it too. Um, and I feel dumb now because we had this plan and I just totally forgot about it, but we, we wrote this blog post about like the top six things or top top six things to do to prepare for bringing your great Pyrenees home or your great Pyrenees puppy home. And we're like, Oh, we'll publish it right. You know, right before a lot of our puppies are going home. And then we forgot, excuse me. So, you know, like what, 10 or 11 of them are already gone home. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, we'll, we, we publish that, look for it on our, on our blog. Um, and then um, we'll make a video of that as well. And, you know, we talk about, you know, all that type of stuff, like the brushes we use, um, the nail clippers, the nail clippers, the, been through quite a few. Okay. yeah. And the, uh, the coat the floor for shoot. Yeah, yeah. The shampoo. Yep. The food, dog bowls, like the water troughs and you know, what we found with the outside, you know, guardians about them flipping the, I mean, cause we seriously bought like six different size of that kind of black, whatever that's made out of. Yeah. That they were like, oh no, they won't get this one over. Lie. <laughs> oh no, they well because they just try to get into it. So yeah. and they they they're already big enough to tip any like bowl right. style water bowl over. So yeah. let's see. Lenny said the little spots on Catherine are are so cute. Yeah, the badger markings. But you know, when when Forrest was here, we we explained to him, we showed him like I'm pretty sure they're gonna fade just you know completely, just like Maze did because. She literally looks just like May when we brought May home. So, yeah, it'll be oh, yeah. interesting. Lenny to just see. asked. I mean, we kind of just answered that for you, but are those spots common mm -hmm. on a puppy and fade away, or is that unique? So, um, Lenny, when it comes to Great Pyrenees, uh, the breed standard, they can be all pure white, or they can have what they call badger markings, and the markings will always be, you know, around the face and ears, and then you know sometimes. Uh, like one mid back and then also like at the base of the tail. Mm -hmm. And that's really like, you know, the only spots where they get them. Um, and then some of them will retain them. Um, and we definitely see I, I've none of ours. I mean, we only have one may that. And we got her intentionally trying to bring that in and then hers faded, but yes, kind of how it goes. Yeah, we, we got her intentionally. We wanted one with a with badger markings, especially for our breeding program to be able to, you know, produce Great Pyrenees with badger markings. And she did that, um, but hers also faded, and it seems like her pups' badger markings will fade as well. But she she had seven puppies total, and only four of the seven had badger markings. Mm -hmm. The other three were pure white, just like the dad dog mm -hmm. Mac. So um let's see uh sharon said queen mabel can still be an awesome grandma or auntie oh definitely one of my older girls who was my best mama became an amazing auntie to my later litters after she was retired and spayed mm -hmm. great socialization oh yeah it's been crazy to see we weren't sure how the three moms were gonna do yeah and all having litters times, at the same time mabel didn't want you know, May's puppies like to nurse on her. But after about like the second time she gave up on that and was just kind of like, you know, go in, come and get it. And then when it's gone, you know, they leave and they just kind of gave up and they all like really adopted each other's babies. Yeah. <laughs> like it's so weird. And then when we had just Millie outside, Millie nursed all of the outside dogs herself. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, we, we were honestly a little worried um, having the three litters so, you know, all at the same time, basically. Um, we were a, a little worried that the mamas might be like territorial or, you know, won't want another mama to come close. And, and you know, we don't have 
we had the three whelping boxes in our our we have a big two car garage it's like it's a huge garage um but we had them all in there we don't have three buildings mm. to put them in separately mm -hmm. we have just one so we were a little skeptical of if it would work or not or if the mm -hmm. mamas would not want running. some of the other yeah. mamas in there uh but luckily like we didn't have like they didn't fight at all they didn't growl at each other there was a little bit of like there was a couple times a little bit of tension like a little bit of like side eyeing each other but we like corrected that right away and they they got over it and they yeah and that was you know making sure their food bowls were filled all the time yes. so they didn't have any kind of anxiety about is there enough if food? somebody walked by and ate a little bit of their food that really ended that yep see this is a big reason why they're so muddy <laughs> all the water it's because we dump it out because it's yep. so muddy so it's just like round and round like we dump it out because it's muddy and then we make more mud <laughs> because we dump it, it out. out yep and then we dump it out again Aww. yep <laughs> <laughs> they love to play i think our adult dogs have even taught our inside dogs the whole what we bark at and, and we've seen them teach little chewini how to warn for hawks oh yeah that's the cr uh, crazy thing we actually have like one of our inside dogs is a little chewini uh, like a chihuahua dotson mix and she'll actually alert and bark at hawks that are flying over it's crazy like you're not a livestock guardian but they could come pick her up. i know they really could she's small <laughs> enough we're already hiding on the porch she's small enough but she runs out there all aggressive like you better go away like yeah. <laughs> it's hilarious to watch like she's like so bold she thinks she's like max size yeah. Yeah. they just won't stop no so we're still keeping the puppies in the 10 by 10 at night and we talked about this week sometime they're going to move out which is yeah go yeah at night days. like once it gets dark we're, we're putting them into we have like a 10 by 10 kennel with a dog house attached and we're putting them in there just at night but uh pretty soon sometime this week we'll um let them sleep out you know on their own and um, some of them will go and like so just out of habit in the dog house and, yeah you know all of that but some of them will start to just be comfortable sleeping out. Yep. And yeah. And the, adults. the final stage, you know, before they go home, usually is there, they have like full reign mm -hmm. of, of the entire area. So, you know, just like our, our adult dogs do. So, yep. It's crazy how it goes by so slow. I mean, you know, and then other times just like super fast. So we've got less than 20 days with all of our outside, you know, pups left and it just seems like such a short amount of time to, you know, yeah. Send them off. Yep. Well, we have a few more minutes of the live stream for tonight. If you guys have any final questions, drop them in the live chat. Love to answer any more questions that you have. Uh, for now, we'll just, you know, kind of watch some of the, the puppies playing and getting more muddy. Um, I know one of the questions earlier earlier were uh, about like how do you keep them clean? You know, a crazy thing like this awesome about this breed is they have like what people call a self cleaning coat. So even with as muddy as they get, um, they, like the the dirt once it dries up, if they roll around and as long as they don't roll around in more mud, uh, the dirt just kind of comes off of their coat. And you know, if you if you wash them, they'll um, they'll end up looking more white. Right. You know, they'll just kind of be like a dingy white if you don't wash them. But like that, like caked on mud does not stay on them. It, it ends up coming off as soon as it dries and they, you know, brush up against something or, you know, lay on the ground. Mm -hmm. Like it just, it, it comes off. Yeah, like we had Maverick pup inside, not the crazy goat, um, for quite a while. And he had come in from outside the garage area and we brought him in and he hadn't had a bath in probably two, three weeks, but just from playing with his, you know, litter mates, he had gotten like dirty, but it wasn't until we washed thoroughly one of the pups that was going to go home till we realized that like he wasn't pure white because he did like look white, 
Right. So, but his coat was like kind of cleaning itself, you know, just not to the level of like being white, but his coat had like shed like a lot of the dirt from like being outside playing. Yep. Yep. Yeah. They're, they're self cleaning coats. Amazing. Uh, we got a couple more comments here. Paige from Mellow's Adventures said they are so cute. They're getting big, Paige. Um, thanks for thanks for watching. And uh, I haven't seen you post anything in a while. I've been checking on your channel, Paige. I hope you're doing all right. I hope Mellow's doing well. I uh, look forward to seeing you post again. I know that it can be tough in seasons. Like we, we went like six months without posting a single video. So I totally get it. But just wanted to let you know, you know, I've been keeping an eye on your channel and, you know, looking forward to your next video. So uh, Lenny asked, is one acre too small for Great Pyrenees if they're going to be a livestock guardian dog? Uh, no, um, I, don't, I don't think so. So, you know, a little fun fact about Willow Ridge Acres. Um, we named it that somewhat ambitiously. Um, we are actually on just an acre and a half of property here. Um, and we hope to uh, sometime in the future, um, you know, have more property than we do now. Uh, but this is kind of a, a stepping, you know, a first step to be, you know, living out, you know, farm life and homesteading. Um, we're definitely at the max of our current property, I would say. And we, we are more than <laughs> protected with the amount of you know, dogs that we have. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I don't think, you know, one acre is too small for sure. Um, I mean, these dogs can, can cover some distance for sure. And, and they do great with that. But, you know, our dogs aren't, they don't show any signs of like, being anxious or like yeah. wanting to be on more property. They, I'm sure that they would do amazing on more property, but um, they're not like cooped up being on, you know, on our property here. We so. also back up to like a huge wooded area. So it seems, you know, I think if we had a neighbor on the other side, it would feel a lot more crowded. Yes, yes. Uh, we got a question. Uh, do you have to clip their nails often? Okay, so we trim all their nails once a month. We do kind of like a you know, spa day. <laughs> I don't know. On the 15th, they get, you know, their medications. Um, and then we trim all their nails. Mostly they're like, these fingernails are fine. What do you call it? Just regular nails. Yeah. But their dew claws have to be trimmed. It will not... Well, their dew claws don't like touch the ground. Right. So like they're not getting worn down it's from their like running around rocks in the. Yeah. Know, so yeah. if left unchecked, their dew claws will like grow too long and like grow, like start growing back into the pad and that would not be good. So, yeah. so we keep up with it. It's, again, it's another thing, kind of the whole bathing and all of that stuff. Like the earlier you do it, the better, like our dogs are really good with it because we do it once a month and they're used to it and then yep. we have a friend that came over and brought their dog and was like can you trim her nails because like i she won't sit still when i do it and i'm like that's because you didn't do it you yes. know like yes. so yeah just keep up with it get them used to it yep yeah. let me said oh wow that's awesome it looks so big to me when i see your videos thanks for for answering yeah i mean you know part of it is our property backs up to uh a, like pretty heavily wooded um it's actually like a catholic uh, like a historic Catholic church, and we're kind of showing it like back on the fence line. But it's like super dense woods. Um, it's actually like a historic Catholic church. It's like over a hundred years old, and um, that property is part of the church's property. And so, I mean, basically that that woods it hasn't been touched in like a hundred years. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, that gives us some privacy. And uh, definitely, when we were looking to buy property, we we learned pretty quick, you know, kind of in the San Antonio area. Uh, I mean, I'm sure it's this way everywhere, but property is getting expensive. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the thing that everybody wants is like 10 or more acres, because if you have 10 or more acres, at least in Texas, I don't know what the property laws are in other states, but in Texas, you can't shoot on your property unless you have 10 or more acres. If you have 10 or more acres, you're allowed to, to shoot. You're allowed to hunt on your own property. Um, so everybody wants 10 or more, but, uh, a good friend of mine gave me some wisdom and was like, what do you plan on doing with that much property? I was like, I just want some privacy, you know? And he's like, well, you, you have to pay taxes on all of that. Like, even if you don't utilize it for anything, you're going to pay property taxes on all 10 acres. I was like, dang, you're right. 
you know, so like we found this property and, you know, even with an acre and a half, it gave us, you know, for the most part, the, the, the privacy we were looking for, uh, you know, definitely more so than you know, before this, we were living oh, yeah. in, you know, your regular like neighborhood, suburban neighborhood in, in Texas here. And the way those neighborhoods are being built now, I mean, most of them, the backyard is, I joke, but it's, it's literally becoming this way where like mm-hmm. the backyard is barely big enough for your back patio mm-hmm. door to open all the way and not hit the back fence. Like you don't even, you have like two square feet of grass in your backyard, you know? Um, so we, we, we just, and I know that that's the way a lot of people live and there's nothing wrong with that, but we just wanted to get out and have a little more space and, and be able to live, you know, like a, a homesteading lifestyle. Yeah. So so now it feels like we have a good amount of property because our neighbors to that side have like a buffer area. So they yep. own and they use it for their goat rotation, was it? whatever. Yeah, Maybe. I think they had some goats, but they don't have them anymore. And so they didn't develop that part. And so we always just say like, it feels like we have a big piece of property, but we don't like the church pays yeah. for that. Yeah. <laughs> We, we've thought, I mean, especially in this market, we've thought about selling because this house would sell for quite a bit. Um, we, but you you also have to turn around and buy in this market then. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, we're not we're not looking to do that right now. But maybe, you know, sometime in the in, you know, the, in the future, uh, we'll be looking to relocate Willow Ridge Acres to a little bit more property. That'd be nice. We've moved. But we're grateful we for what we once. have. Didn't we move like 10 Oh, yeah. We've moved a lot. In our... A lot. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I think like, this is the longest we stayed in a house in, in a long time. So yeah. I would rather our neighbors move and just like bulldoze their houses. Down. No. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, we're uh, we're over the hour mark here and we want to respect everybody's time. So we, uh, we thank you guys for, for watching here tonight. Uh, we hope we answered everybody's questions and... Uh, Stay tuned for our next one next week. Hey, if, oh, yeah. What didn't they can like type a little comment and then we can talk about it next week. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. If we didn't answer all your questions, just put them in the comments still. And uh, or maybe you're watching this after the live stream, post in the comments and uh, we can address those those questions yeah, in the next live stream. Just, like sleeping through the whole thing. Which one? This one right here. Oh, yeah. That puppy is just out and everyone around. It's just playing. <laughs> it's just playing crashed out all right (laughs) it's gonna be us well you guys have a good one and we'll see you again next week bye